Hello, here we go. Part four of five. We are almost done for determining whether a series converges or not. Oh my gosh. All right, so in this video, I want to talk to you about what we do when the big rectangle fails us. We know that we're not allowed to take negative terms into the big rectangle. So um, our last video ended with the big rectangle failing us, right? We went into the big rectangle, tested a series. It turned out that that series diverged, right? But the problem is the series I tested wasn't the original series. It was the absolute value of the series. And so we ended on this question of, well, what if I had let it alternate? What if I had left the negatives in? Would it have converged? So you may notice on your flowchart that it, if you go to the big rectangle and you get divergence, we don't just say the series diverges, no, no. This is like the last stop, right? This is it, friends. <laughs> if the series absolute value doesn't converge, we still have one chance, this guy, to test the series itself. This is the only test we have that can handle negative terms. Um, but we're only, only, only going to use it if we've already tried to prove absolute convergence and that didn't work. Okay. So the first thing we're always going to do is go to the big rectangle and try to prove absolute convergence. If it turns out that the series doesn't converge absolutely, this is like a last resort to see if, well, would it at least converge if I kept the negatives, right? Would it converge conditionally? Now, it has a very appropriate name. It's called the alternating series test. By alternating, we mean alternating signs. Okay, so plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, or minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, doesn't matter the order, right? But it has to be a true alternating series. In other words, it's not good enough to just have some negatives. It has to be that plus, minus, plus, minus pattern back and forth. In other words, you can't have like minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, it won't work. Right? It has to be this true alternating between plus and minus, the kind that's only produced by like a negative one to the n in the rule, or a negative one to the n plus one, something like that. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to use the alternating series test, again, only when absolute convergence fails. So for example, <laughs> finally, okay, the harmonic series. Right. I go through this, it's, well, actually, I don't even need this one, but it's fine, it's fine. It's not geometric, right? If I stop at P-series, I could say, fails P-series, right? That's n to the 1, fails P-series, diverges, by. Okay. But let's say I didn't notice it was P-series and I went on into the big rectangle. What I'm going to find out is that that series diverges, right? We know it diverges. But here's the thing, it has a friend. You got a friend, and his name is the alternating harmonic series. So we have this question. Well, look, here's what I know. This series is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, right? I know for a fact that if I take its absolute value, it's going to diverge. But is there any chance it'll still converge if I let it alternate? And that's what we need to find out. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this friend the alternating series test. Okay, so it looks a little bit weird. It's actually a really straightforward, quick test. Okay, so basically all the alternating series test does is it gives us three conditions, and if we can show that our series meets those conditions, we're good to go. Okay, so first things first, it's got to be an alternating series. So it has to be the plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus thing. So the series we were just talking about, the alternating harmonic series, is a prime example of that. So it's negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. So my terms are 1, minus 1 half, plus 1 third, minus 1 fourth, plus 1 fifth. And it'll be minus 1 sixth, plus 1 seventh. It's going to be minus all the evens, plus all the odds. Okay? It's a true alternating series. If it's not, you can't go any further. Okay, the first condition is that each u sub n is positive. Now let's talk for a minute about what u sub n is. If you look up here, there's two parts to this alternating series that they showed us. This piece right here 
has one function and one function only, and that's to make the series alternate, right? Literally, that's all this does. It makes every other term negative. If the power of n is odd, it's negative. If the power of n is positive, it's, um, or I'm sorry, even, then it's positive. That's the only job it has. The rest of the rule, everything other than the negative 1 to the power, is what we call our u sub n, right? That's what produces the actual terms. All that n plus, all that negative 1 to the n is doing is making the signs flip. Okay. And it has to be there because I need the signs to flip if I want to use this test. But the u sub n, the rest of the rule, that's what I actually want to take a look at. Okay. That's what all of these criteria go to. So. If I just take a look here at this series, notice I just kind of separated it out a little bit here. I just rewrote it. I pulled the negative 1 to the n out front, and then what's left is, is this 1 over n. This right here is what we call u sub n. Right, that's my u sub n. So when I do my, when I test my criteria here, um, that's what I'm going to be looking at. So criteria number one. Each u sub n has to be positive. So in other words, oops, sorry. In other words, is it ever possible for this to be negative? So is 1 over n always positive? And the answer is yes, check, right? Because all the values of n that I'm putting in are positive. Now, why does that need to be true? Think about it. If there's any chance at all that this n is, that this thing comes out negative, then you're not going to have an alternating series. At some point, you're going to have like a negative where there shouldn't be. The only negatives should be in this negative 1 to the n. That's the alternating piece. If you ever have a 1 over, if you ever have a u sub n that has a negative in it, it's not an alternating series and I can't use this test. So that's the first criteria. It's basically making sure we have an alternating series. Okay. The next criteria, this looks so fancy. If you don't know this symbol, upside down A, it's red for all. Okay, so this is saying each u sub n is greater than or equal to the one that comes after it. In other words, the terms are getting smaller. That's all that's saying. Right? Each term is bigger than the one that comes right after it. In other words, each term is smaller than the guy that came right before it. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller for all n. So in other words, I don't care what value of n you use, every single term is going to be bigger than the one that comes right after it. All we have to do to test that is find u sub n and u sub n plus 1. So here's u sub n, right? Is it true that 1 over n is always going to be greater than or equal to 1 over n plus 1? Uh, yeah, right? Same numerator, bigger denominator, that's true. 100% right? every time. I don't care what n is. This is being divided by n. This is dividing by a number one bigger than that. This fraction is going to come out smaller because the denominator is bigger. Okay? Now look, when you're, when you're writing this, literally this is what we write. 1 over n is always positive. Yes, this is true. 1 over n is greater than or equal to 1 over n plus 1. And then last but not least, the u sub n, if you take its limit, has to approach zero. Now, when I first learned this, I remember thinking this was redundant. Right? Like, do I really need both of these criteria? Right? This is proving that they're getting smaller. This is much more specific. Right? This is proving that they are approaching zero. Okay, now, because again, they could be approaching, they could be getting smaller, but approaching one. And if that's the case, you've got divergence. It's also possible that your limit could go to zero, but it's going to zero by oscillating up and down, right? In which case, we don't want that. That would break number two criteria. So you do need both of these. They, they seem like they're a little bit redundant, but they're not. Okay, so I need to show that the limit as n approaches infinity is going to be zero. So all I have to do is do the limit of that u sub n and show that that's equal to zero, and it is. Check. So because I'm able to check off all three of these criteria, I can say that this original series converges. And again, I know if I take that negative 1 off, I'm in trouble, right? But if you leave the negative 1 in, you will have convergence. 
So the last test we need to talk about is this guy because this is the guy who's going to help us if my series itself has negatives in it. Take the negatives out. I go to the big rectangle. If I get absolute convergence, awesome. I'm done. But if I don't, we come and test. Well, what if we left the negatives back in? What if we said, fine, you could keep your negatives. Then will you converge? That's what this thing asks. Okay, so let's talk vocabulary a little bit. We already know what absolute convergence is, right? Absolute convergence means that I took the absolute value of the series, it converged, so the series converges too. Nice example of that here. One over, negative one to the n over n squared. Okay, if I take the absolute value of this, in other words, if I take the, whoops, if I take the negative one to the n and pitch it, right, I'm going into my big rectangle, then I have the series one over n squared. I don't even need to go into my big rectangle. Right? This converges, it's a p-series. p greater than one, converges. The absolute value converges, so does the original. And we say that the original series converges absolutely or that it has absolute convergence. Okay. So if you can prove that the absolute value converges, we say that the, uh -huh. we can say that this series converges absolutely. Its absolute value converges, therefore it converges as well. Right. Now, that's different than this guy we just looked at. This guy we just looked at will converge if we leave his negatives in. If we take them out, we're in trouble. Okay. That has a name, and that is called conditional convergence. The condition being that it gets to keep its negatives. It's like, will you converge? I will converge on one condition, and that is that you let me keep my negative one to the n. Fine keep it then, right? But we're calling it conditional convergence. You don't get the grand title of absolute convergence, your conditional convergence. So for that one, we would need the alternating series test, right? Because if I take the absolute value of this, if I come over here and I say, all right, let's check out this series. I'm going to drop the negative one to the end, right? Who needs that? One over n, we go, ooh boy, diverges. It's the harmonic series. You can just say it's the harmonic series, or you can say it's a p-series where p is equal to 1. Either way, divergence, right? So since it diverges, we come back and we test for conditional convergence. So if I put the negative 1 back, what would happen? The only way to test that is what we just did, alternating series test. If, the alter if it passes the alternating series test, then we, says, we say that it converges conditionally, or that it has conditional convergence. Okay, it's not both. <laughs> so let's take a look at a couple series so we can determine does it converge absolutely, does it converge conditionally, conditionally, or does it just plain diverge? Let's find out. All right. I thought that if I used this handwriting that looks like a small child it would make us feel like this is easy. All right. Oops, sorry, don't look at that. All right, so um, before I go any further with this, um, we're going to talk about, we want to determine if the absolute value converges right. That's what we're going to test for every time. I want to do the ratio test on here because I want to show you something. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is test for absolute convergence. So we're going to do the ratio test because why not? Okay, so the series that I am now looking at, losing the negative, is just 1 over n cubed plus 1. Now you may be saying, Miss Britton, is this real life? Are you really going to do the ratio test on this? Obviously, this converges, right? If you take away the plus 1, this is a p-series, Right? which we know 1 over n cubed converges, and all you did by putting a 1 plus 1 in the denominator is make it even smaller. Right? So we can easily convince somebody that this converges by direct comparison. Right? Easy. But why would I when I could use the ratio test? 
Okay, so watch. My n plus 1th term is going to be 1 over n plus 1 to the third plus 1. My nth term, flipped over, because I'm going to multiply instead of divide, is going to be n cubed plus 1 1. When I simplify that down, I have n cubed plus 1. Down here, I have n plus 1 cubed plus 1. Now, there's a couple ways you could get at this. You could FOIL this out, right? You would have a third order polynomial over a third order polynomial, and you could eliminate all the lower terms. Or you could say, you know what? I'm approaching infinity. I care not about plus ones. Plus one up here, by, plus one up here, by, plus one inside here, by. And what you end up with is n cubed over n cubed, which is 1. The reason I wanted to show you this is because this is an instance where the ratio test fails. Now, as you know, I'm a huge fan of the ratio test, but sometimes it fails. The good news is the ones it fails on are usually the really simple ones because they're so simple, there's so little going on that when you compare one term to the next term, it's like everything just cancels out, right? Because there's not really much happening. So usually if the ratio test fails you, it's a pretty easy argument because it was probably a pretty simple series to begin with, right? And again, you may have not even gone to the ratio test. If you recognize that as being like a friend of a P-series, you might have just said, Psh, series, right? So if I do the ratio test, unfortunately, that's inconclusive. I got to go find another test. Okay. Now, you could do direct comparison, you could do limit comparison. Um, you can't do integral. Right? I can't integrate that. I need a 3n squared. I need my u and my du. Don't have it. Okay. So limit and direct comparison are pretty much our friends here. Okay. But I think direct comparison is good. So again, just real quick, if I have this series, a great one to compare it to would be 1 over n cubed, which we know converges because it's a p-series, p greater than 1. And then we can say, oh, and by the way, 1 over n cubed plus 1 is always going to be less than 1 over n cubed. So therefore, it also converges. So guess what? The absolute value converges. I don't have to go any further. This thing converges absolutely. I took away its negatives. I tested it. The ratio of times failed me. And I had to go back and grovel to the direct comparison test and say, sorry about all the smack I've been talking on you. Can you possibly prove this series for me? I'm going to continue to talk smack with direct comparison. I don't care. All right. Tested the absolute value. It's fine. It condition it, The absolute value converges, so the original series also converges, and we say it converges absolutely. All right. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at another one. I have no idea why they chose to put n minus 3 up here. It's so silly. n minus 1 would have done the job. Okay, <clears throat> so we need to determine, again, is this absolute convergence, conditional convergence, or does it just plain diverge? All right, let's find out. So first things first, let's get rid of this. So test for absolute convergence. Okay, that would be testing the series, taking out this negative business, 1 over the square root of n, which one could rewrite if they were so inclined as 1 over n to the 1 half. And if you did write it as 1 over n to the 1 half, you might say, hey, that's a p-series. And that P-series, my friends, diverges, 
right? This is a P series where P is less than one. This diverges, period. Okay. So bad news, I do not have absolute convergence here. It's out of the question. I just tested the absolute value and it failed. So here we go. Let's see, what if we let you keep your negatives? So let's go back. I'm gonna rewrite it a little bit separate, right? I'm gonna put my negative one to the n minus three here, and then I'm gonna write the one over root n over here, because remember, this is just the thing that makes it alternate. This is the piece I care about, right? This is my use of n. So I'm gonna look at my three criteria for the alternating series test. Okay, criteria number one. Are all u sub n positive? So one over the square root of n is always positive, right? And the n values are positive, this is positive. So this is a check. Okay, next thing's next. Is u sub n bigger than the one that comes right after it? Is each term bigger than the one that came after it, than the one that comes after it? So let's see. Is 1 over the square root of n bigger than, or equal to, the one that comes right after it? And again, we can all agree as mathematicians that have gotten this far that if you have equal numerators, we all agree that if the denominator is bigger, it's smaller, the quotient is smaller. So we don't have to do a lot of explaining here, right? We just say, look, this is true. One over, n, one over root n is bigger than one over root n plus one. So that is a check. And then last but not least, we need to know is the limit as n approaches infinity of u sub n equal to zero? Is that true? So we say, well, the limit as n approaches infinity, one over root n. Heck yeah, that's zero. Check. Okay. In case you're wondering before you ask, yes, you have to state your test and you have to state your criteria here, right? So we have to actually say what we're checking for here. We can't just write stuff and like put check marks, right? You have to actually say what you're testing for. So good news. This guy, in his alternating form, passes. He wins. He passes the, can, the alternating series test. So he's, he doesn't converge absolutely, but he converges conditionally. In other words, if we let him keep his negative signs, he'll converge. But only if we let him keep his negative signs. Okay. Now, had he failed the alternating series test, we would have to say, we don't know. <laughs> Because if you fail the alternating series test, it's still possible it could converge. I mean, if your terms aren't getting smaller, it's going to diverge. But you probably already would have figured that out a long time ago. Okay. All right. Let's look at one more of these. Okay. <sighs> Absolute convergence, conditional convergence, or divergence. So here we go. Let's see. If I take the negative out, I've got n plus 1 over n cubed plus 1. Now, again, uh, if you're trying to find, if you're trying to kind of guess what's going on here, again, the plus 1s go away, right? I'm heading to infinity. I don't care about a plus 1. That leaves me with n over n cubed which is basically an n squared. This is what we have here, right? As you approach infinity, basically what you have is a one over n squared. So I'm pretty sure this converges, right? Now, I don't wanna ruin the fun for you, but the ratio test fails this one too. I already did it, right? Because all the n, all these plus ones just go away and you end up with n squared over n squared. Again, it's usually the simple ones that that's gonna happen for. So. I think probably the easiest thing here again is one over n squared, or is to compare it to one over n squared. So let's do this. Let's do the limit comparison test 
just for some practice, right? Okay. You could do direct comparison here if you wanted to, but let's do limit comparison just for some practice. Okay. So let's take our term and divide it by this guy. See what flushes out. So I have n plus 1 over n cubed plus 1 times n squared over 1. Now, pretty much what happens here is the same thing that happens when you go into the ratio test, right? I'm approaching infinity. I don't care about all these plus 1s, right? So this plus 1 goes away, and this plus 1 goes away. Once you do that, this term reduces to an n squared. You end up with n squared over n squared, right? which is one. The great news here is this isn't the ratio test, right? This is the limit comparison test. And if the limit comparison test gives you a one, that's not bad news. That means they have the same behavior. So great news, one over n squared converges, therefore this guy does too. And again, look what we did. We tested the absolute value. The absolute value is converging. The series is converging. We say it converges absolutely. The absolute value converges. We don't have to go any further. Okay, so that is all of the tests that we have. The only other thing that we're going to start looking at, the last thing we have to do with series, is start looking at series um, where there's also an x involved, right? And in, ca in case you were wondering where the x's went, you probably just appreciated that they left, right? Don't worry, they're coming back, right? All these series we've been looking at the last couple days have only had n in them. So the question is, does it converge or diverge? Was a, it's, it's either it converges or diverges, right? There's no kind of in between. Right? Once there's an x involved, Asking if it converges or not is a little bit of a more complicated question. All right, so that's what we will, that is the last thing we have to address. That is what we will address in the last video. But as of this moment, your flow chart should be completely filled out. So if it's not, then you need to go back and through the videos and make sure that you didn't miss something, right? Your flow chart should be done. Okay, um, we'll see you soon. Questions at the end of the video.